This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Welcome, Abam. Welcome, everyone. We want to welcome all of our Torah Anytime viewers. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming out in the cold weather. Tonight, we're talking about dogs. That's what we're talking about. Lavdafka, the hot ones on the table on the right. But we're going to speak about Kalavim. Interestingly, the night of Pesach, the grandson of the Chsam Soifer, the Mikhtav Soifer, turns to his Zayda, turns to the Chsam Soifer, and he says, Zayda, there's one thing that really baffles, uh, baffles me, I cannot understand, cannot comprehend the custom of stealing the Afikoim in the night of the Seder. You know, all men hug him in Yisrael Torah, and stealing the Afikoim, it seems like a rather queer custom. Stealing, I mean, Chaysam Eshach Kalish Baruch Hu, MS. What kind of custom is it to steal the Afikoim? So, Sam Soifer thought, and he thought, and he didn't give an answer. At the end of the Seder, he turns to his grandson, he says, let me explain something to you. The Gemara says, M'sachim Adav Kuf Yud Gimel, you have it on your sheet in number two. The Gemara says, there are two kinds of cities not to live in. Don't live in a city that doesn't have a horse that neighs, says the Gemara of Amr Lei Rav of Asi Loi Sador Bemasa Deloit Sanof Be'esosia. Don't live in a city that doesn't have a horse that neighs, Mm-hmm. And no dog that barks. If the city does not have a dog, you can't live there. Rashi says without dogs, the dogs scare away the Ganovim. The do- alarm systems? The Ganovim are not scared of alarm systems. First of all, nobody uses them. Nobody t- they're never on. Right? Because people say, oh, on Shabbos, you can't. Most people, they're off the whole week. Who uses an alarm? The only thing that scares away Ganovim are dogs. So if there are no dogs in the city, you can't live in the city. Says the Chsam Soifer. The night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Pasuk says, Ulechol B'nei Yisrael, lo yechratz kelav l'shoyna. The dogs weren't barking. The dogs weren't barking. You know who was running rampant? The Ganovim. So the night of the Seder, there was all kinds of Ganevas. So therefore, the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, you need to remember everything that happened, including all the Ganevas. The best way to commemorate Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is by stealing. What are you going to steal? You steal the Afi Kaiman as a commemoration of all the Ganevas that took place the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Why? Because the dogs were not barking. Okay? So that is a, a very interesting explanation of the Chsam Soifer as to why there's a custom to steal the Afikoim in the night of the Seder. Bechlal, let's try to understand this Pasuk, the Pasuk of Ulechol B'nei Yisrael, La Yecharatz Kelev Lashayna. That the dogs were not barking the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. First of all, who cares? That's important to know. That the dogs weren't barking. I mean, if the Rebun Shum is writing it in the Torah, that means this is a critical part of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. This is like a fundamental part of, y- of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Why was it important that the dogs were not barking? After all, the Rebun Shum doesn't make miracles for no reason. He doesn't make random miracles. What would have been missing if the dogs were barking? What, the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim experience would have been different if the dogs were barking? What's the significance of that? Why is it noteworthy? Why the Rebun Shum even mention it in the Torah. Bechlal, what's the big deal that the dogs didn't bark? What, dogs bark every single night of the year? Maybe that night they happen not to bark. Why is it even significant that they weren't barking? Dogs don't bark 24 hours a day. There are times they don't bark. So why, why is it noteworthy that the dogs were not barking? So the tour, we're gonna, going to offer many different explanations as to the significance of the dogs not barking the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Well, the tour begins, and the tour says, everybody knows the Baal HaTurim, but the Baal HaTurim that we have on the regular Shul Chumashim is only a very minor part of the commentary of the Torah on the Chumash. And the tour says like this, Normally, when dogs see meat, dead meat, they bark. It gets their appetites going. The night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, they're dead firstborn everywhere. They're nevelois everywhere. You would have expected the dogs to be barking. You're right, dogs don't bark every single night. But when there are dead bodies everywhere, the dogs certainly would have been barking. And yet, the Torah says, on that particular night, it was quite noteworthy that the dogs were not barking. And then the Torah adds, the Gemara says in Baba Kama, that when the Malchamavas is in the city, the dogs sense it. You know, in general, dogs have like a sixth sense. They say by the, before the tsunami came, the dogs were agitated and they felt an impending disaster. Dogs have a certain sixth sense. And in fact, the Gemara already tells us that when dogs bark, that means the Malchamavas is in the city. 
And that night, of course, the Malach HaMavas was rampant, right? Every single firstborn was dropping dead. So you would have expected, if the, not only was the Malach HaMavas in the city, there was never a night of the year that the Malach HaMavas was so busy as the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. You would have expected the dogs would have been Meshuggah that night. No. No. The dogs did not bark. Ah, so Dodi's asking, what do you mean? The, do- the Malach HaMavas? The Malach HaMavas wasn't in the city. Right? In the Haggadah we say, there was no Malach HaMavas, it was Rebun Shalom himself. Well, some suggest that <coughs> the Rebun Shalom came and gave them a death blow, but they didn't necessarily die until the morning, and in the morning the Malach HaMavas came. So, the Malach HaMavas seemingly did have some role, after all the Torah says, put the blood on the doorpost so that the Mashchis does not destroy. So we see there was some kind of Malach HaMavas involved. Okay? So th- those are two reasons why the, malach- why the dog should have been barking. Either because of all the dead bodies lying around, or because the Malach HaMavas was passing through the city. Okay. Comes the Riva. Riva is one of the Bali Antoisvis. And the Riva says, another reason why the dog should have been barking he says, first of all, dogs usually bark at night. And then in his third shot, he says a very interesting thing. When a dog sees people with sticks, a man with a stick gets on the nerves of a dog. Maybe a dog wouldn't ordinarily bark. When he sees a, a guy with a stick, that gets a, so we know, how did they eat the Karim Pesach? The, the Pesach says, V'kacha toichlu oisai, Masnechem chagurim, Nalechem raglechem, Makelchem biyadchem. They're holding sticks. So you would have thought that would have really agitated the dogs. But even so, the dogs did not bark. Cheskuni adds a fourth reason why the dogs should have been barking, based on the Gemara in Masech Tabrachis. The Gemara says on that Gimel, that the night is broken up into three watches. Right? Gimel Mishmar is Laila. The night is three watches. The first mishmar, chamor noyar, the donkey brays. The second mishmar, the dogs bark. The third mishmar, a baby suckles from the mother and a husband speaks to his wife. So these are the three mishmaras. The Gemara says uh, that in middle of the second mishmar, the dogs bark. Most, na- namely, chatzois. So the dogs ordinarily bark every chatzois. Every single midnight, dogs bark. And that midnight, the dogs did not bark. That is the explanation of the Chizkuni. Another explanation. We have the explanation of the Toldois Yitzchak. Okay, so tonight you're gonna, we're going to familiarize ourselves with some uh, Svarim that we may not have seen before. The Toldois Yitzchak was written by somebody by the name of Rav Yitzchak Karo. None other than the grandfather of the Beis Yosef. In fact, in the old prince of Magid Meisharim, uh, we know the Beis Yosef had a Chavrusa, the, the Beis Yosef had a Malach that came to learn with him, and he recorded everything the Malach taught him in a book called Magid Meisharim. In the old editions of Magid Meisharim, the first half of the Sefer is the Chidushim of his grandfather, Reb Yitzchak Karo. <coughs> so that is, says Reb Yitzchak Karo in the Todos Yitzchak, that you know what really gets dogs agitated? When dogs not only see people with sticks, when they see people running with sticks, that really makes dogs nuts. And the night of the Seder, the Jewish people were leaving. Mm-hmm. So not only are they carrying sticks, they were running with sticks. The dog should have gone crazy. The Malchamavas is out. There are dead bodies all over the place. It's midnight. The Jews have sticks. They're running. Every single thing, right, if you go to the veterinarian. By the way, if anybody needs a good veterinarian, there happens to be one down the corner where I live, on the corner, the famous animal hospital. So you ask them, what, what would cause a dog to bark? They would say, you know, the famous shear, Wednesday night shear, you have the tour, the tour says dead bodies, and then uh, the Riva says the Malach HaMavas, and the Cheskuni says midnight, and the Todos Yitzchak says men with sticks running. Okay. But we're not done. We haven't covered all the ways to get a dog to bark. You know what really gets dogs to bark? When they hear screaming. So, how do I know? Because on the way to Taras Emes, in the old shul, there's certain nationalities, I'm not going to say which ones, they love dogs. And um, when we would take my kids to shul, they sometimes would try to tease the dogs. Not, you know, we, we cut that out, we stopped that. But how do you tease a dog? 
you make noise. Okay? Don't tell anybody they did this. <laughs> and if you scream and you shout, the dogs, they go crazy. When you make loud noises, it really gets on the, on the dog's skin. So, now, the night of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, it happens to be, the Chumash says, The loudest geshrai anyone ever gave was the night of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. So you would have expected the dogs to be absolutely ballistic the night of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. No! Not the running, not the sticks, not the shouting, not the dead bodies, not the malachamoves, and not midnight did not get the dogs to cry out. Interesting, the Igra de Kala, Igra de Kala is uh, the Bnei Yisachar, Ritzi Alimach Midinov. He points out that we have something called a Masaira. Masaira is an ancient tradition when you have two phrases in the Chumash that appear in two places, the Masaira links the two. So two times in the Chumash it says the following expression, Ulechal Bnei Yisrael. Ulechal Bnei Yisrael. One is, Ulechal Bnei Yisrael lo yecharatz kelev l'shaynai. And the other time is by Makas Chayshech. Look at number nine. It says, Loi roh ish es achiv, Loi kamu ish mitachtav, Shloish es yamim, U lechol b'nei Yisrael. So two times it says, U lechol b'nei Yisrael. Says the b'nei Yisraschar, this is like some type of gzeir shava, where we compare Makas Chayshech to Makas Lechayrois. How's that? We know by Makas Chayshech it was dark for the Mitzrim. But U lechol b'nei Yisrael, Haya... It was light for Bnei Yisrael. So it says the Bnei Yisrael, just like by Makas Choshech, it was light for Bnei Yisrael. So too by Makas Bechoyro, the Zoyar says, the night lit up like a summer, a summer day. Right? The, like it says in Tehillim, Laila Kayoim Yoyer, the night lit up like the day. That is a reference to the night of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim. So we're, we're making a hekir, we're making Zer Shava. Just like the night of Choshech, it was Or of Bnei Yisrael, so too the night of Makas B'Chayrois, it was light for the Bnei Yisrael. But says the Igra Dekala, we could take the Zer Shava the other way as well. Just like the night of Makas B'Chayrois, the dogs weren't barking, so too the night of Choshech. We know, during the night of Choshech, what did the Jews do? They went into the Egyptian homes and they opened up the drawers and they searched out for all their jewels and all their valuables and all their money. Now, Goyim have dogs. And you would have expected that all the watchdogs, as the Jews are sneaking in into their homes and opening up the drawers, you would have expected the watchdogs to start barking. Says the Igor Kala. Just like it says, Ulcho Bnei Yisrael, Yecharatz Kelev L'Shoyna B'Makas B'Chayrois, you make some type of connection, so too the dogs did not bark the night of Makas Choshech. Okay? So that's another chidush of the dogs not barking. Something very interesting, if you look at number 11, the Medr Shoychartayv, Medr Shoychartayv, the Medr Shantihilim, the Medr says that when the Yam drowned the Mitzrim, so Klai Yisrael saw the Mitzrim dead, Shinemar on the fifth line in number 11, Vayar Yisrael is Mitzrayim Meis. So what did the Jews do when they saw the dead Egyptians lying on the ground? The Medr says, Hayakal echad v'yechad mi Yisrael noitel kalboi. Every Jew took his dog. Ah, oh, so now we're seeing a chiddush. The Jews in Mitzrayim, they had dogs. They had dogs. Okay. And what did they do with the dog? V'hoylech v'noisein es ragloi al tzavar shal Mitzri. They went to the Egyptian and they stepped on his neck. And they turned to the dog. He said to the dog, Eat the hand that enslaved me. Eat the intestines of this guy who didn't have Rachman on me. So I want to say Chiddush. I don't think anybody ever said this before. Now we know why Kishka is a Jewish food. Right? Why? Because after Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, they fed, that's what they fed to the dogs. That's, and Shabbos, of course, is Zeichel Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. So what better way? It's Zeichel Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. Okay, we'll just, that's between, the, that's between the two of us. But that's what the Medr says. The Medr says that the, the Mitzrim, uh, the, the Jews fed the Mayayim of the Mitzrim to their dogs. So you see now, that not only did Mitzrim have dogs, Jews also had dogs. So when the Torah says, It wasn't just going on the, uh, the Goyish dog, dogs, the, the dogs that belonged to the non-Jews, it was also going on the dogs that belonged to the Jews. Okay. Now, Rabbi Isai, where did the Jews get dogs from? 
I know you're always bothered by that, right? How did the Jews of Mitzrayim have dogs? Where'd they get them from? Well, there is a matter. Look at it. We're going to skip to number 19 for a moment. The matter says <coughs> in Bereshis Rabbah, Parsha Ayin Gimel Ois Yud Aleph, that Yaakov Avinu, when he was shepherding for Lavan, he had about 1.2 million sheep. That's a lot of sheep. Any shepherds here? No, not yet. If you were a shepherd, what does a shepherd need? Sheep. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, that, well, that we know. Scissors. You need scissors. You need dogs. You need, right? You need guards. How many, how many dogs do Yaakov Inu have? Moshe, you're probably wondering. Right? The whole day, how many dogs did the Yaakov Inu have? It says the Medrash, Reb Levi Amar, Shishim Reboi Klavim. 600,000 dogs. 600,000 dogs. Rabban and Amri, Maya Vasrim Ribai, 1.2 million dogs. You thought 101 Dalmatians was a lot? No, no, no. Uh, 1.2 million dogs. Not hot dogs, real dogs. Kloven. Yeah? Now, what does this mean? There's a whole explanation, I'll peek Kabbalah, what the meaning of Yaakovino's dogs were. We're not getting into that tonight. Now, we're just taking it literally. Yaakovino had a lot of dogs. So it's not far-fetched to say that, look, we yarshin the dogs. Right? They went down to Mitzrayim, and you know, the dogs came out. Okay, you'll think about that. That's where we had the dogs. In Parak Shira, one of the primary characters of Parak Shira, the character that sings possibly the most beautiful of all the songs in creation is the Kelev. The Kelev in Parak Shira says, you can look at number 15, Klovim Oimrim, Come, let us bow down and bend our knees. And bless Hashem. What a beautiful song, right? Who says that? The dogs. Why were the dogs, Zoycha, to sing such beautiful Shira to Hashem? So the Medrash, the Medrash, Yaakut Shemani, take a look at number 13. Yaakut Shemani says like this. Rabbi Yeshaya, a great sage by the name of Rabbi Yeshaya, he fasted 85 Tanesim. Why did he fast 85 Tanesim? The Omer, he said, Klovim, the dogs. We know the dogs, the, the Pasuk says in Mishlei, the Haklovim Azai Nefesh. It's in Sefer Yeshaya, it says, the dogs are the most brazen of all the animals. Yizku Loimar Shira Zu. Why in the world were they Zaycha to sing such a beautiful Shira? What Shira do the dogs sing? They sing Bayu Nishtachabe, the Nechra, Nivracha Lefnei Oisenu. So you have this great Sadiq, Rabbi Shaya, and he fasted not once, not twice, not one week, not two weeks, 85 Tanesim to understand why the dogs are Zaycha to sing this beautiful Shira. An angel came down from Shemayim. He says, Why are you fasting? I'm going to tell you a little secret. From the day the Rebbe Hashem revealed the secret to Chavakuk, nobody knew the answer to this question. Why the dogs are zoichet to sing such a beautiful shir? But he said, because you, Rabbi Shai, are such a big time of we're going to reveal to you why the dogs are zoichet to sing this shira. Not only that, there's another thing dogs are zoichet to. If you're a soifer, and you make sifrei Torah, and you make tefillin, you make mezuzus, there's a Dovar Pele that people are not aware of. You know how you make a Sefer Torah? You cannot make a Sefer Torah without a dog. You know that? You cannot make a pair of tefillin without a dog. You cannot make a mezuzah without... What do you do with a dog? Oh, you would not believe it. You, you skin the cow, right? The hide. You can't just ride the Sefer Torah on the hide of a cow. You need to take a dog. The dog uses the facilities. You take the excrement of a dog and you treat the cow. And if you don't have the excrement of the dog, you cannot make a Sefer Torah. Yeah? Halacha. It's a medrash. The medrash says, that's how you make Sefer Torah. You take the tsoya of a kelev and you treat the hides and that's how you produce a Sefer Torah. Not only Sefer Torah, tefillin, mezuzahs. I'm not making this up. That's what it says. It's halacha. So the question is now, not only does dogs zoicha to, to sing Shirat Hashem, 
But basically, any holy thing we have in the in the Aron Kodesh on the walls, you put on your arms. The holiest items we have, you all need not only the dog, the tsoya of a dog. What's the pshat? That's why Rabbi Shaya fasted 85 times. And a malach came down from Shammai and he said, let me tell you something. The biggest zechus in the world is when you, when you want to open your mouth and you want to say something and you zip it and you control your mouth. The dogs wanted to bark. They wanted to open up their mouths. Is a chus, they kept their mouths closed. They were zoicha to sing shira to Hashem and that every Sefer Torah, Tzfilin, and Mezuzah, we use the tzaya of a dog. So let's try to explain this a little bit. By the way, the dogs have another reward. Whenever you have a trefa, whenever you have an animal that has a mortal wound or an animal that's ripped apart, you throw it to a dog, right? It's a mitzvah. According to some, it's a mitzvah say raisa. If you have a novella, novella means you have an animal that was not shechted properly, you give it to a ger toishav. So you're giving a novella to a ger toishav and you're giving a trefa to a dog. So the shach al Torah, the shach al Torah is the Talmud of the Arizal. Um, and he asks, one second, you're telling me a dog knows the difference between a novella and a trefa? The dog doesn't know the difference between, you know, kosher delight, all of Hashem, and Burger King. Yeah? How, how's the dog going to know the difference between Nevela and Trefa? Says the Shach al Pi Kabbalah, dogs know the difference between a Nevela and Trefa. Why? Because we said from the Gemara Baba Kama that when the Malach HaMavis is in the city, the dogs go crazy. Dogs cannot stand the Malach HaMavis. A Nevela is an animal that died with the Malach HaMavis. A Trefa is an animal that died through another animal. It's considered not the Malach HaMavis. The dog cannot eat an animal that was killed by a Malach HaMavis. It will... It's like allergic to it. So we do not give nevelos to dogs, we only give trefos to the dog. Says the Shach Alatayra, really the dog, why does the dog get two rewards? Reward number one is we throw it a trefa, and reward number two is <clears throat> that it's, the reward number two is we use its tsaya to treat Sifrei Taira, right? So we throw it a trefa, and we use it for to produce Sifrei Taira. Gets two rewards. You know why? Because there are two reasons why the dog should have been barking. Number one, he says it was midnight. Number two, number two, the Malchamavas was in town. So really, it had two reasons why it should have been barking, and it restrained itself and overcame these two sibois, and therefore it gets two rewards. Shach Torah continues. The Medr says that even more painful to the Egyptians than their firstborn dying was the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu was being proved to be an accurate, to be an authentic Navi. Right? Moshe Rabbeinu says, Midnight, all the firstborn are going to drop dead. So when the firstborn died, more than the pain they felt that their relatives died, was the pain that they felt that they were going to have to face Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, You see? You see? I know what I'm talking about. So the matter says they took their firstborn and they buried it in the basement, in the cellar. The dogs then went and unearthed the dead bodies and dragged them out and they were mefarsim, the, the miracle of Hashem. The dog did not eat the novella. They should have eaten the right? A dog. You ever hear there's an expression? A mid-American expression. He's smiling like the butcher's dog. On the East Coast, they don't eat, right? There's a mid-American expression. He's smiling like the butcher's dog. Dogs don't usually smile. But if you're Zoycha to be the butcher's dog, the butcher's dog is always smiling. So these dogs, they had a fear, right? They could have gone to every single house and eaten up all the dead animals. They didn't eat the Nevela, Mida, Kineg, and Mida, they ate their Zoycha to eat the Trefa. Shach continues. They were Mafar same the miracles of Hashem. What document of ours spreads the miracles of Hashem? The Taira. We don't make a safer Taira without a dog. They were mafarsim the miracles of Hashem. Their zoicha to always be mafarsim the miracles of Hashem. And one last thing, says the Shach Torah. They made it easier for us to get out of Mitzrayim. Imagine if we had a deal with like hundreds of dogs barking. It would have taken another day. They facilitated the giving of the Torah. Mida Kineged Mida, their zoicha, that from their excrement we produce Sefreta. That's what the Shach Torah says. The Tzrar Hamar, look at number 20. Tzrar Hamar is Rabbi Avram Saba. Rabbi Avram Saba was one of the Gerushe Sefarad. 
if I'm not mistaken, the granddaughter of Rabbi Avram Saba married the Beis Yosef. So here we have Rabbi Avram Saba, we have the Beis Yosef's grandfather today, and we have his father-in-law's father. He says, you know who the dogs that weren't barking were? It's a reference, an epithet. The reference to the Mitzrayim. The Mitzrayim being called dogs. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu was so incensed that Paro said, I don't want to see your face again. Moshe said, oh yeah? None of you dogs are going to be saying anything when we're leaving Mitzrayim. In other words, Le'yechatz Kelev L'Shainai refers to the Mitzrayim. Okay. Now, I know you want to hear a, a Rabbi Yonis and Ibeshitz, so I have one for you. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Kachatzois Halayla, all the firstborn are going to die. Right? The Lush and the Moshe Rabbeinu uses, everybody knows. Look in uh, number 21. I know a lot of people that said there were a lot of speeches. The speeches were very long, Matzah Shabbos. So we're going to go short tonight. We have to make up time. Okay? So the Pasuk says, look at number 21. Moshe, Koyomar Hashem. So says the Lord. Kachatzois Halayla. Around midnight on Yom Tzibbuchim, we're coming to get you. So Rashi points out the Rebbeinu Shlom said Chatzos Mamish Midnight Pink Loch Midnight Exactly Midnight. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu say Kachatzos? So the famous Rashi is that Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid that the Itztagnine Parei, the astrologers, they'd be you know looking at the watch, and it's going to be not twelve o'clock but twelve o'clock in seven seconds. They say Moshe, you're a liar. This is not Chatzos. This is around midnight. It's not Chatzos. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, look, I'm not promising you exactly chatzois, ki at about midnight. Frek the Rebbe Rabbi Yonasan. By the way, there are very few people in history that are called the Rebbe Reb. The Rebbe Reb Shmelka and the Rebbe Rabbi Yonasan. These are the two, right? It's, let's say there are different titles and in, in, uh, you have some Rabbanim that are called Hakadosh. Who's called Hakadosh? You have Rashi Hakadosh. You have the Archaim HaKadosh. You have the Shlach HaKadosh. And some of the Alshech HaKadosh. Not every, re- not every parish is called HaKadosh. And not everybody is the Rebbe Reb. So, Rabbi Yonisan is called the Rebbe Rabbi Yonisan. By the way, uh, even according to secular historians, throughout Rabbi Yonisan and Ibershitz's lifetime, he had at least 24,000 Talmidim. He's one of the greatest all-time Rabbi Tzaytayra. If you were a Rav in Europe, in the generation after Rabbi Yonis and Ibershitz, Rabbi Yonis and Ibershitz was your Rebbe. He was the preeminent Marbitz Torah in his generation. He was also a Goy Natsum. And he asks, what was Moshe Rabbeinu so afraid of? Why couldn't Moshe Rabbeinu say, exactly Minna? Well, because the astrologers would say, Moshe Rabbeinu is not exactly Minna. What do you mean? The Gemara in Brachli says, in Afgimel, what happens exactly at midnight? Klavim Sayakim, the dogs bark. So Moshe had nothing to be afraid of. Let Moshe say, midnight... And he'll be proven to be correct because at midnight all the dogs will bark. Ah, oh, says Rabbi Yonasan. I wish there's only one problem. The night of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the dogs were not barking. It was the Chobane Yisrael, the Yechratz Kelev L'Shainai. So the Mela, Moshe Rabbeinu, had to say, Kachatzoy Salayla, but he couldn't say exactly Kachatzoy Says the Gemara B'Sachim Dav Kuf Yerchas. The Amar Rav Sheishas Mishum. Rav Leza ben Azariah. Kal ha-mesaper lo-shin hara roi la-hashlichoi l'klavim. Someone who speaks lo-shin hara, he's fit to be thrown to the dogs. Right? If you want to know, what do you do with a ba lo-shin hara? Like, what does he deserve? Who should you throw him to? The Gemara says, a ba lo-shin hara, someone who speaks lo-shin hara, you should throw him to the dogs. Why the dogs? Of all, of all things, why do you throw them to the dogs? So the Chafetz Chaim in the Sefer Shmir Salashan, he he quotes the Maral, and the Chafetz Chaim says, in the name of the Maral, you know we're telling the Baal Hashem Hara, hey you, what's your problem? Why do you have to open your mouth? So he says, what do you want? I couldn't control myself. Said, what? You couldn't control yourself? Even the dogs could control themselves. The night of Yitzchak when the dogs wanted to bark, when it was midnight. When it was nighttime, when they saw men with sticks, when they saw men with sticks running, when they saw the Malachama, and they saw dead body, they had every reason in the world to open their mouth. If a dog could control its mouth, you could also control your mouth. And that's why the Baal Lashon Hara, Kalah Mesaper Lashon Hara, Roy Lahashlichai Leklavin. The Kliyakar. 
Kliyaka wrote a very rare Sefer. Probably uh, many didn't, never heard of this Sefer. Kliyaka wrote a Sefer on Chumash, on Medrash, called Ir Gibayrim. And he says, Adavar Pele. A Kalev is a Remez to a Jew. To Bnei Yisrael. What? How is a Kalev a Remez to a Jew? It says, Rashi Tevois. Kalev, Kili, Bnei Yisrael. Ki li b'nei yisra. So he says, what's the, what's the analogy between a dog and a, and a Jew? He says like this. Of all the animals, the animal that has the hardest time finding food is a dog. It's very hard for a dog to find food. You wouldn't have thought that. You would have thought a dog, they go around, they open up the garbage, they eat anything. No. Come out, there's nothing they eat. In fact, because of that, the Gemara says in... Sachem. The Gemara says that Hashem had so much Rachmanus on dogs because they have nothing to eat. If you look in uh, look in number sixteen in Masech the Shabbos, Daf Kufnon Hayam and Beis, the Gemara says that the dog's digestive process is the longest of all the animals. It takes a dog three days to digest its food, and it's not because it only eats hot dogs. It takes a dog three days to digest. Why? Because there's kemat nothing a dog could eat. So because it's so, it's so hard for it to eat, Hashem <coughs> slows down its digest. This way, there's always something going in the system. Others learn, by the way, a lot of the Perushim and Perak Shira say that the reason, you know, it's a very interesting halacha. <coughs> you should know that, you know, if you're in the presence of tsaya, if you're in the presence of excrement, you're not allowed to learn, you're not allowed to dive, you're not even allowed to think. So you have a baby, and the baby... You can't learn, you can't dive, and you say, can't say Kiddush, right? So let's say, you know, sometimes you're, you're walking to shul, and obviously, what do you do on the way to shul? You think in learning. What else are you going to do? What else? Obviously. Right? Why not get Olam Haba? You might as well, right? I know you're smiling because it's obvious, right? But, but if you're in the presence of Tsaya, you can't even think in learning. But of a dog, you're allowed to. It's not considered Tsaya. You know why? Because since it takes three days... It's so broken down that it's not even considered a Dover Moss. That's part of why we're allowed to use it for Sefer Tarot, and Mezuzah. because it's a complete, di- completely different digestive system. Why? Because Yerban Shalom has Rachmanus. By the way, it's a very interesting halacha. I'm only here, this, I was only here one Shabbos. So, but still, I can tell you this already. You know, the halacha, you're not allowed to feed an animal on Shabbos that's not dependent on you, right? A stray animal, you're not allowed to feed on Shabbos. So, for example... Parshas B'Shalach is coming, right? So the kids in some schools, they tell them, put, birth, put food out for the animals. It's, a, it's an Isidra Abonan. You know how to put food out uh, for animals on Shabbos? Isidra Abonan. You only have to give up all your money not to do that. Tashlech. You know how to throw bread into the river or to the lake on Yom Tif. It's an Isidra Abonan. You know how to do it. Really? Yeah, the Mishnah Bruce says, you know how to do it. You could do it during the week time, but not on Yom Tif. You could put out bread for the birds before Shabbos, but not on Shabbos. There's only one animal you're allowed, a stray animal you're allowed to feed on Shabbos. A dog. Mishabur says it's even a ketzas mitzvah. Because every dog is considered dependent on you because it has nothing to eat. Mishabur. You can't feed the birds, parakshira, and you can't feed the fish, tashlich, but you can feed a dog. And the Mishabur says even a little, he says it's a ketzas mitzvah. It's a little bit of a myth. Dogs have nothing to eat. Oh, oh. So he says, so too Jews don't have so much to eat either. That's the analogy. How's that? A lot of things you can't eat. It has to be uh, shechted properly, right? You go on vacation, you go out, you go to a different city, there are not so many things to eat. You go to a hotel motel, you can't use uh, the appliances, you can't use the utensils. Our diet is limited. That's one aspect of the analogy to the dogs. Kelev, Kili B'nai Yisrael. There's an ancient sefer. There's an ancient sefer called Sefer Kushiyos. He says, you know, throughout history, one of the biggest insults that the Goyim like to heap on the Jews, what do they call us? Dogs. Right? You ever see the sign? No dogs or Jews allowed. Right? That's what they always, Goyim always call us that. Why? So he says, this is an ancient sefer in the times of Rishon. Even though the Goyim don't even know why they call us that, but there's a Kabbalistic reason. First of all, Kalbi, my dog, is Ki Li B'nai Yisrael. 
Kili B'nei Yisrael. And the Gemad, we know, what, what are the Goyim jealous of? They're jealous of the fact that we are Hashem's children. You know, you ever hear the Goyim say, After all, we're all, all mankind, we're all the children of the Lord. It's not true. We're not, we're not Hashem's children. We're not all Hashem's children. Goyim are not Hashem's children. Only Klai is all Hashem's children. We're all God's creations. We're not all His children. Bonim atem l'Hashem leke. Only Klai is all children. So he says the gematria of Bonim is the same as Klovin. The Goyim don't even know. They think they're insulting us by calling us Klovin. But they're really affirming the fact that only we are Bonim l'Hashem leke. Okay. So now that you got all the all of the halachic trivia about dogs, we're going to end off with something very important. To me, this is the, the diamond of the shir. Says Gemara Beya da Fhafe Amidbez. Says the Gemara Beya Shloisha Azenhin. There are three things in this world that are brazen, that are quintessentially brazen. Audacious, audacious, right? Chutzpah. Who are they? Among the nations of the world, ding ding ding, Jewish people. We're the most chutzpahic. Among the wild animals, the dogs, Kelab. And among the birds, the chicken. Tonight we're talking about dogs. Why are the dogs, in what way are the dogs, the most brazen of all the animals? In what way? So, so probably most of us would say, oh, they're the most brazen. You could be walking down the street, minding your own business, walking innocently, and they come jumping at you, barking, screaming, they try to bite you. What a chutzpah! I need a Gemara to tell me that. I need Amaram. An Amara Kli Mechayi Mesa. I need him to come and say, by the way, dogs, they're very chutzpah there. Says Rav Hutner, a gem. He says, you know what the brazenness of the dog is? The brazenness of the dog is that when you're sitting on the couch, the dog comes up and he sits down next to you and he starts snuggling and he makes believe he's your pal. And he makes believe he's providing you companionship. And he pants. And he tries to talk to you. And he tries to cuddle with you. As if he's on par with a human being. What a chutzpah. Dog, don't you know you're a behemoth? You're not an Adam? But he has the tremendous chutzpah to lay the claim to what Rav Hutner calls, look at number 29 in the second pack, one, two, three, four, five, six line. You see? Tell me if you know that language. Man's Best friend. The chutzpah of the dog is that the dog tries to be and wants to be and makes the claim that he's dog, man's best friend. That somehow him and man, they're shudfim, they're partners, they're on par, they're equals. Okay, a man is a little bit more sophisticated sometimes. <laughs> you know, they have... Um, when I, was in, I spoke in Tennessee, they had... I ended up in... Um, there's only one kosher restaurant. So there's, um, it was in, I think, a rehabilitation center. Anyway, so uh, in this rehabilitation center, they brought in all types of dogs, therapy dogs, that people who are undergoing different types of therapy, somehow the dogs, they believe, provide therapeutic companionship. That's the biggest chutzpah in the world. A, a dog is going to cure you? What, not the friendship of a man? The biggest chutzpah of all the animals, none of the other animals claim to be on par with man. A lion doesn't claim to be on par with man. A lion just wants to eat man. <laughs> right? The, no other animal claims to be on par with man. The dog tries to buddy-buddy with man. Such a chutzpah. Normally dogs, they go around not barking, talking, like a conversation. Right? What are you doing? I'm, I'm just talking to my dog. Right? Says Rav Hudner, but the night of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the dogs, they came to an understanding and recognition that we and man, we have no connection. That this people, these people, these Jews, they're now leaving Mitzrayim and they're marching on to their destiny to receive the Torah, to <laughs> elevate themselves to the true definition of Adam, the dogs kept their mouth closed. They didn't try to cuddle. They didn't try to provide companionship. They didn't try to pant. They didn't even attempt to make the claim that they're man's best friend. That's the significance of The rest of the time, when mankind sort of falters, you have the chutzpah of the dogs, that the dogs say, you know what, we and man, we're, you know, we're basically in the same playing field. No. 
the night of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, the Jews elevated themselves and they proved themselves worthy of the title Adam. Title Adam, right? Especially, we have a shir on uh, Sefer Shemais from the Ramami Pano that the whole purpose of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim was to revert back to Adam Arishon before the Chet. We know Hashem created Adam Arishon that he should be worthy of the title Adam and because he sinned with the Yitz Hadas, he descended Kibahemois Nidmu Kibahemois Nidmu he, he became, mankind was downgraded to the level of Behema and then when we left Mitzrayim we were marching on to receive the Torah Hashem says like this Hashem says Ani Amarti Kimatem Uvnei El Yon Kuchem I thought that you elevated yourself to the level of Adam Arisha and Kaidem Achet, and now you are the true Adam. Well, the night of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we were the true Adam. And at that night, the dogs did not pant, the dogs did not lay the claim that they are man's best friend. The dog and all the rest of the world and all mankind recognize the superiority of Klal Yisrael, the true Adam. And this is the deeper meaning of Ulechol Bnei Yisrael, Layecharatz Kelev L'Shainai. Thank you for coming. I wish you all a wonderful mm. evening. Shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.